What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an amazing video today showing you how you can write data to SQL directly from Power BI. This is amazing because it's going to let you store your data and then report off of it. But before we get into this trick, I wanna let you know that I have published a Power BI beginner course over on the BI Elite training website. So navigate over onto biElite.com slash training and you'll see a list of courses there. The Power BI level one beginner course is officially available, so go check that out. You'll learn everything you need to know to create your first beautiful and insightful Power BI report and also learn some best practices along the way. So let's go ahead and dive into how you can write data to SQL within Power BI. So just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, I am querying a web API in order to get my views data for my YouTube channel. So for example, each one of these bars is how many views my channel had at a certain period of time. So the first time I started up this process was uh, February 7th, 2020 at 6 p.m. And you see my views was somewhere around 1.32 million. And we see at this last poll, my channel as of 9 p.m. on uh, on February 10th, 2020 is up to 1.33 million. So you see each individual data pool has written a record to my data and you can see how it's grown over time. So I'll give you a quick look at the data view. You will see one row, here let me sort this real quick. You will see one row for each data pool. So basically what I'm doing on the back end is I'm querying a uh, web API in order to get the data and saving it in my database and then doing it again next hour and the next hour, and then three days later, I now have 76 individual rows of data. So I'll show you exactly how I'm doing that. So let's go ahead and open up the query editor, and you will see that I have two queries here. So let's focus on this first one. But I wanna show you what the end result of this first query is. And basically this is a SQL statement. So the first thing you need to understand about this method is although you can write data to SQL, it's a little bit tricky because Power Query can run multiple times and you don't want to be writing the same record of data multiple times. So this SQL statement has some logic baked in saying if this record already exists, do not insert it into the database. So firstly, we are checking to see if our hour stats table has the same record with our current created date time that we're trying to push that data for if it does then I just want to select um, I just want to select star from my table and get all the data back don't write anything else if that record does not exist in the database I want to insert into that hourly stats table based on these columns with the values so uh, basic SQL insert statement insert into table you label out the column names and then you give it a list of values. But in my case, I'm only giving it one uh, values clause with all of my data in one line. And then finally, I wanna select star from hourly stats. So that's going to return all of our data. Either the uh, yes or no condition of my if statement will return my entire table of data. So let's get into um, a couple of steps above this. So all of these previous steps until removed other columns is all logic that I had to employ to get my data in a clean format with proper date times. I, I didn't want any minutes or seconds because I only want one entry per hour. So I will skip over that. That's not really in the scope of this video. But then once we get to add SQL column, that's actually the first thing I did here that would matter for this trick. And I created a conditional column by going to add column and custom column, sorry, not conditional column, custom column. So you click on custom column and I added in this code right here. So basically it starts off as text and says, if exists, select star from our hourly stats, just like I walked you through. And then I concatenate some text here. So this create a date time is set equal to the text dot from of my date time column. So we can see that in my example here, my create a date time is uh, 2 10 2020 at 4 p.m. So I need to say, if exists, select star from hourly stats where create a date time equals that value and it's important to have text.from because it needs to be converted to text to be appended inside this SQL statement. And then uh, we add some more text here, select star from hourly stats, else insert into hourly stats and all the columns that I need to reference values. And then we start concatenating a few more values. So I want to insert in my created date time, I wanna insert in my views, I wanna insert in my subscribers number, and my views numbers. And then finally we close off that parentheses 
and select star from hourly stats. So I know that's a lot to look at and it's really difficult to make sure that you have all your commas and single and double quotations in line. But once you do so, you'll be able to check your SQL by looking here. It should show as text just like this. Um, actually, before I get into that, we will have a column here on the right, but in order to get to the text representation of this instead of column, right click and drill down. And that's exactly what I've done here with the SQL, and that's how you get it in text format. So if this looks good, um, you should be pretty good to go. If you do want to test this, you can just copy this text and go over to SSMS, and you can even do something like try to run that script. So if I try to run this, we can see that actually it only selects star from hourly stats because that data actually already exists in my database, so you'll, you don't see any messages saying that um, that that record was created. So with that, we have our logic already set up. So let me go back to Power Query. So this is where the real magic happens. We have our SQL statement, and now we have a second query that is going to write that to the database. We actually haven't written it yet. We actually only have text right now. So we need to use the SQL code and use it in a database. So we'll just make a connection to our SQL Server database, and we'll get that code. Um, so let me get my server name, and here's my server name. So I will paste this into the server, and I need to get the name of my database, which is YouTube Data. So I will type that in, YouTube Data. Click OK, and it's gonna make that connection to the server and database, and I'll select my table and click OK. So if I get rid of the navigation step, now I have just the code that I would need um, in order to create this from scratch, or you can just start here, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna now get rid of this because it's unnecessary. So going back to my run SQL and pull data step. So we have that first step, and our second step is this really, really handy uh, Power Query function that says value query, and then we pass in our source. Let me open up my advanced editor. So source is just our first step. So we're passing in source, and then we're passing in our uh, query. So API call and insert code is my other query, this first query we walk through. So basically it's saying run this native query on my source, which is my server and database, and run this SQL code. So I'm going to do that and click, uh, click done. And you see, if we look back at our SQL code, uh, both the uh, yes and no conditions of the if statement uh, result in a select star. So that is why our data is being pulled back. So regardless of what happens, it either inserts into the database or it doesn't, and then returns all of our data. So it's always gonna return the data after it's been inserted or not. So with that said, let's click close and apply. And I think since an hour has gone past since I've refreshed this, we can see that my last time of data is 9 p.m., but I'm recording this at 10.57, so I've missed my 10 p.m. refresh. So let's go ahead and refresh and see if we get an extra bar. So this is going to run that, and we do see it's changed, and we now have our 10 p.m. bar, and it's immediately reportable within Power BI because it's writing to the data set or writing to the database and then pulling the most recent data from that table. Taking this method even further, you can actually publish three individual data sets up to Power BI service and refresh them on a schedule. Um, and since you get eight refreshes per data set, you can have one refresh per hour. So if you wanna see my environment here, um, you can see that in this workspace, I have data insert one, two, and three. And basically data insert one is set to refresh from 1 a.m. to 8 a.m. And then data insert two is 9 a.m. to like 5 p.m. And then 6 p.m. to midnight. So um, we actually are able to insert data every hour because we're running individual data set refreshes in order to write that data to SQL every hour. So I don't have a report that's built off of this data set yet, but you can just envision that it would look just like this. So all we would have to do is kick off a manual refresh of that report and all of our data would be there coming directly out of SQL. So this is an amazing trick. I've been wanting to make a video on this for a really long time, but haven't really gotten around to it. But I really did want to share it with you, and hopefully you can uh, use it in your circumstances. So make sure you check out the BI Elite training over at bielite.com slash training. Check out that Power BI beginner course. There's a lot of great stuff there for really great value, and I will see you in the next video.